In this video I'm showing you the secrets to early game cargo and passengers by combining both together on the same train for maximum efficiency in the early game. So what does this actually mean? So let's go ahead and explain it straight away really simply with just literally a cargo and a passenger station in one. We're going to connect these two towns together, Glendale and Eugene. So grab your passenger station, place it down in the usual spot between commercial and residential. Now because I'm just connecting two towns here together and we're not actually connecting a whole network, I'm going to place the cargo platform the closest towards the exit on the way out of the platform. And you should do this on your saves as well. Place it on the exit out of the station towards the rest of the towns outwards. So when the train comes in, it won't stop at the end of the platform, fill on cargo and then pull forward into the platform with the passengers. Make sure that it's pulling in and then after going to cargo, it's better that way. So that means because we're going this way towards this town over here, we're going to make the end of this platform on configure a cargo platform by deleting that and then going to platforms, cargo platform and place it in like that. And the same thing on the other city. And of course now I same connect them together with train tracks. I'm just going to use a single track because it's just an example. Obviously you do a proper setup in your save. So the passenger stations, as long as they're in the right place in the city, they're always going to work. But for cargo, it's a little bit more complex. So over here we can see we've got a crude well and we've also got a sawmill. The sawmill requires an input of logs and the crude outputs crude to go somewhere else. Over in our second place we have a crude oil refinery and we've also got somewhere around here a lumber farm to get some wood for the sawmill. It's obviously very simple, we've got oil to oil and wood to wood and there's nothing really else going on, no complex stuff. With that in mind, we want oil and we want log carrying capacity. Go to the depot, we're going to grab a train and then under cargo we're going to grab the stuff we need. So because we're carrying oil and we're also carrying lumber, we're going to want some crude carrying stuff. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four of those I think. And then it shouldn't, it shouldn't matter, you can obviously adjust it later. And we're also going to grab some flat cars, let's go with four again. And now we're going to grab some passenger cars. So we'll chuck a couple of those on and one of these guys here as well. And I think that's pretty good for the most part. We're going to buy that and we'll chuck it onto a new line between those two places. To make the line, press on the passenger icon first, then the cargo icon. And then the same thing over here, press on the passenger icon and then the cargo icon. That's now the new route created and we should start to see this train coming out of the depot. Job done. Now pause the game because there's actually nothing linking these up. Very simply, we're going to get some vehicles that are going to carry the stuff down to the city in some kind of drop-off point. Once again, this is actually going to cause huge emissions. So this is not good in your late game. You want a different setup in the late game when things are getting bigger and bigger. But because this is literally one train, it's not a big deal. Because it's just the early game and we're doing very small quantities of things. Like I say, as the game progresses, you're going to get more and more things on these trains. More and more emissions. That's why you need to change later on. But this is actually just a really good strat. So you build one of those guys. And then on each of these places as well, we'll build one of these guys. It doesn't have to be neat because it's just an example, of course. And then we can connect these two up with lines. I'm also going to build a road here just because it's got a long way to go without. Again, on your save, you make it perfect. I'm just doing it roughly. And connect these two together. And a new line and connect these two together obviously give them names say this one's oil i would literally just call this one oil one keep it simple you don't need to put oil glendale or anything like that there's just no point because uh, the whole map shares resources anyway by the end so why are we naming things just call it oil like what it is um yeah do that for all of those and the same thing applies to the other city and with all that now connected by road all we have to do now is wait for these road vehicles to reach their destination pick up the goods and load it onto the train and the stuff is now getting delivered over to the station. We've got plenty of fuel waiting around to be picked up. Easy stuff. The train is just about to pull in as well. So the train picks up the fuel here. Full load of fuel. Full load of passengers. Over to the next station. But how can we upgrade this and make this much better? Well, there's one key thing that we need to do, which I've already touched on slightly, which is going to make things really overpowered in the early game. And that is going to be connecting all of the town's industries to the town. And then every single train can share resources and it's really, really good. Let me show you how it works. I'm going to use two cities, just the ones we've done already for the example. Obviously do this to all of your cities in your game. All right, let's connect them together. Buildings. So put one of these pickup points on every single industry. So the first thing is probably to double track this track because this train alone is not going to be good enough to have a huge, huge length. It's not going to be strong enough to carry all of the goods it needs. So instead, we're going to have lots of quantity of these trains instead that are going to run a higher frequency on the network, which means that we're going to need to double track it, which is really easy. Just find the start of the track or near enough the start, click alongside when it goes blue and do it in little increments and it should work then just like that. 
But now that's done, at the end of the tracks where it's a buffer, just literally plug it in there and stick a signal there on the right side. If you drive on the left, on the left side, of course. And then over on the other side, the same thing. And now, of course, we need block sections. So literally every, like, very short distance, because it's very early game, just stick signals in. And do this along the whole length of the line, both sides of the track. Just put loads of different signals, all in small segments. And now we've got loads of block sections. We can start to introduce more trains to this network, which is very easy. You can just press manage vehicle and clone. There you go, we've got an extra train now. But if we're going to start to carry more types of goods on these trains, we're going to need to add some more different types of carriages. So I'm going to edit this and I'm going to go to the cargo section and add a couple of box cars to start off with. I'm also going to give the carriages a little bit of an upgrade as well for the passengers so we can have more capacity on board with less length. Because these trains, you've got to keep the length of them down in the early game. The capacity high, that's the goal. And we also might need some gondolas as well. Uh, let's just stick them on. So we'll go for three on the end just like that. It's just good to have every type of cargo. And at the end of the day, if you don't need it at the end, just delete them. It costs you barely any money to do that. It is a hell of a struggle up these hills for these trains. So got to keep the length as short as possible so it doesn't struggle as much. And now we have trains that are fully mixed. We have full passenger and cargo on these trains. And these can carry every type of good in the game. But not a lot of goods coming towards them. So for that reason, let's stick some goods to these stations that aren't already going. And for industries that are a little bit further away, you can use one or two setups. You can literally use the simple mass road vehicles or you can use a little shunting train. For the sake of today's video, just to make it nice and simple, we'll use a shunting train. It makes things a little bit more complex at the station, but it's a lot quicker. So I'm going to add a quick new platform just on here and we'll grab a new station after that and we'll stick it in over at the industry we want. I think in this case, we'll probably go for this one here, this bricks factory, and then we'll connect these two up. I've also connected this stone up over to this over here, and that now drops the stone at the station. Then it goes onto the train, and then the train takes it to the next city along the path. And I've also gone ahead and added some storage on here, some extra storage for some of the cargo, because I'm playing in really fast speed at the moment, uh, which is not typical for Transport Fever 2. I'm just showing you how it works. And what that means is that actually... I'm, I'm progressing pretty quickly through the early game currently and it's not giving you a true reflection of what it's like in the early game but it also shows that towards the mid game very long trains and very much a lot of cargo that is going to struggle to all get loaded and be stored correctly all types of cargo in the game now let's just say there's a steelworks near a town we're now going to connect these two coal mines over to the city as well as this iron mine here we'll connect up to this town here and then we'll ship everything down the track which is already set up by that train setup and then that's going to get dropped off taken to the steel mill over here. Train pulls in. As you can see, it's getting loaded with all types of cargo and getting sent off. So I think you kind of get the gist of it here. You kind of get the point. So what happens when the cargo reaches such a high limit where we can't actually load all of the cargo on the platform? As noted here, there's actually quite a lot of stuff just sitting. There's actually overloading this platform here. It's quite a lot of stuff just sitting around. Well, that's why we need to talk about hubs because we're getting more into the middle and late game now. So let's switch over from this early game save in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and we'll switch to a modern day save, and I could show you the differences between designs. Welcome to Hushy Island. So a late game setup, you're going to go from a cargo station here, and you're going to place it down with not only the maximum length by the vanilla default presets, you're going to place it down, and then go to configure and add tracks to make it as long as physically possible. As you can notice, I can't actually build any further with this one. It's the max length in the vanilla game. And this is the perfect length for late game, as what you can do with this is you can have really long trains. Let me show you an example. That can actually carry every single good, like we showed earlier, all in one go in a mass, mass quantity. Long, long trains. And long cargo trains are really good fun. So let me show you how this works. It's a similar sort of setup, but instead of cities, we're not taking the cargo to cities, we're taking them to what's called a hub. So over here is the North Yard. It's not the best yard ever, but it works. You might notice I've made a few changes since my best cargo ever video. One of which being I've made the platform insanely longer and dedicated for the trains that are going between the yards. Whereas before we had the trains going between yards bunched in with the trains that are shunting different goods towards this center. So now it means that a train like this can pull in and it can pick up all the cargo in one go. Look at that length, insane capacity on these trains. It can pick up all the stuff and then it can take it down to the distribution hub, which is all the way down here, all the way down here. And that's gonna get dropped off here and then delivered by these trucks 
to wherever they need to go. There's multiple, multiple drop-off points surrounding both of these cities in these close proximities. And then they all get sorted automatically by the trucks and dropped off. And that's why it's OP. That's why you shouldn't do point to point where you go, oh, okay, there's a machines factory here. I need wood and steel. So I'm going to go find the mines and directly hook those up to the steel factory. And then, oh, hang on, we need some wood. Okay, it just doesn't make sense when you can run trains full both ways with these hubs methods. And it's so, so, so good. I can't state this enough. It is so good to do it this method. It is really really OP. I mean, those profits speak for themselves, and I'm burning a lot of money on aesthetic trains as well. But this explanation isn't really good enough for you to actually build it and perfect it in your save to get the most amount of profits and efficiency. And that's why you need to watch this video, which shows you the best ways of making cargo hubs in Transport Fever 2.